and welcome to Craft with Sarah. In this video, we are making these giant sports pennants out of cardstock. They are really, really big. They're a great size, perfect for hanging in your home or in a dorm room or something like that. And they're fully customizable, so you can put your favorite team or your name or anything here and change the colors up for the team that you support. There are four different designs to choose from, all of which are included for free. There's American football, ice hockey, basketball, and baseball. And as well as these giant versions, which come in two pieces to stick together, I've also included some smaller ones that can be cut from one sheet of card instead. They're all included in the download folder for you. Now, I am definitely in a sporting mood at the moment with my designs, as you might have noticed from the previous video on my channel too. And here is why I have sports on the brain at the moment. You can download the free cutting file for this project at craftwithsarah.com forward slash free dash SVGs, or follow the link in the description of this video to go straight to the download page. The download comes in a zip folder and you need to unzip this before you can upload the files into Cricut Design Space. Once you've downloaded and unzipped the folder, it's time to get the SVG file into Cricut Design Space. Open up Design Space and start a new project, then go into Upload over on the left and then Upload Image. You can then either click Browse to find a file on your computer or drag and drop it in. Make sure you choose the unzipped version of the download folder and then within there are two subfolders, one called large pennants and one called small pennants. The files are exactly the same designs, it's just that the large ones have some of the bigger pieces broken up into two so that that will allow you to cut it larger than one sheet of paper and stick the pieces together. So if you want to make really, really big pennants, then those are the ones to go for. If you're making smaller ones, perhaps to go on a greetings card or any really that are under 12 inches wide, then use the small ones instead as you'll have less to stick together. For this video, I'll show the big ones. So let's look in large pennants and then you have the four different themes. There's baseball, basketball, football, which is American football and ice hockey. I'll show the ice hockey one. So let's go in here. And then there are three different file formats. The ones you want for Cricut Design Space are the ones which start SVG in the file name. So I'll click and drag that in. And this is what it looks like. Press upload. It will then appear in your recent upload. So you can click it to get the green border and then press add to canvas. And this is how it loads in. Now you'll notice on this one, it has a line down the white part of the pennant. This is because this is my larger than matte pennant design, the large one. So this is where the two bits of paper will overlap. If I scroll down to the bottom, you can see here, you've got the two sides. If you don't want it to come in two pieces, upload the small version instead. You can easily change the colors on this to match your favorite team. For example, if I had perhaps a red team, um, you just look down the layers panel, choose the bits you want to change, and then in the box up here, you can change the color. Because this is the larger one, these bits also come in two sections, so I need to change those and you can change any other part of the design you want to just by looking and finding it and changing the color. Let's say I wanted to turn everything that's currently dark blue yellow. A quicker way to do it than by looking at each thing individually is by changing one of the colors. Let's go there. Then I can click color sync at the top of the layers panel. This changes it so now my layers are split out by color. I'll click the little drop downs until I can see my new yellow color. And then to change all the blue in one go, simply find the blue, click and drag, and then drop it into that yellow section and everything changes at once. We'll also need to add our team name to the pennant, or of course we could uh, add a person's name, or it could say happy birthday or anything you want it to do. So first let's find the existing one and click it. Just press the little trash can. I forgot to say I did just click back over to the layers tab here at the top. So we'll delete that one. 
and then go into text and type out um, whatever you want. I'm just going to put my name. Let's go Sarah's room as if I was putting this on the door to my bedroom. Of course, you can say whatever you want to. And then I'm going to choose a font. If you choose a font where all the letters touch each other, a script font, for example, ooh, I just scrolled a bit too much then. It just got rid of the one I was actually trying to click. <laughs> That's not very helpful. All right, I'll try this one. Um, so you see on this one, the letters are mostly all touching. So it will cut out in several pieces rather than each letter being separate. However, this isn't the best font to choose because these little bits here are really thin. So when you cut it from cardstock, it will be difficult to cut and it will probably tear. Instead, you want a nice thick font and it can be one where the letters touch. But because we're cutting this quite big, it's actually not that difficult to cut each letter separately and then um, stick them on. It's not changing the font. There we go. It was just being a bit slow. So there's that one. I didn't quite like that one either. Let's have another look. I want something nice and thick and bold because that will sort of match the vibe of the design of the um, the pennant. You know, it's nice, thick lines and strong imagery. So I want something that matches that one. I quite like that one, Don Juan. There we go. Okay, I like how that looks. All right. Oops, I just accidentally dragged that into my pennant. Didn't need to do that. Let's make it nice and big. There we go. And if you're cutting the larger than that one, which I am, we'll probably want to just take a note of the size. So it will be 20 inches once it's all stuck together. So just keep an eye on your text because if it gets too long, you might need to separate it into several different layers. Um, this one's fine because it's still only nine inches wide, but if you go over 11 and a half inches, then you would need to do it over two layers, perhaps have the Sarah's on one type room on another. Otherwise it will be too wide for your Cricut to cut because it takes it at the full width rather than each individual letter. Okay, I'm gonna change this to red. There we go. And I might also change this to red and really get the red and yellow vibe going. So that would then be all I need to do. If you want to resize it, you can do. And the easiest way to do that would be to drag your text into the pennant group here. That way, when you resize, if we go uh, maybe a bit smaller, 17 inches, your text is going to change too. Whereas if you hadn't have dragged it into that group, then you would have had to resize the text separate. But there we go. There's our banner all edited and changed. And then to cut it out, click make. Design Space might ask you at that point if you want to save it. If you've made lots of changes, then I do recommend saving it. And then you can change the paper size in here. For example, if I do A4. And then you can move things about. And I'm wondering if I can fit this on my first sheet so I don't need to use three. So click the dots, move object, then move it. Thing is, we can't have anything overlapping. So I'm not sure it will fit. Uh, I think it's just going to be too big. Oh, it works. There we go. So now both of those are cut from the same sheet of paper. This one's now showing as empty, but don't worry about that. Once you click on to the next step, the empty ones will disappear. So go ahead, change all of your paper colours, get everything looking how you want it to, and then press continue to connect to your Cricut machine and follow the on-screen instructions to get everything cut out from cardstock. 
I'm going to be cutting the um, design as it originally loaded in and I'll do that for all four separate banners so you can see how to stick each one together. Here's my baseball pennant all cut out and I've led the bits on top of each other just to check I'm happy with all the different colours. I'll stick this one together on video first and we're going to use a combination of glue and foam squares but if you wanted to keep yours a little bit more kind of true to a printed pennant or a cloth pennant then you could just glue everything to keep it nice and flat instead but I'd like to add a little bit of dimension to mine. All right, so we'll start by sticking the two pieces together, which we'll do with some glue. And they'll go over each other. I'm gonna be really careful with everything else, seeing as I positioned it, until the two sides meet up so that you can't see any bits sort of poking over. It should just be a straight line on both sides. So mine's gonna go down to about there I'll just keep my finger there so I know not to put any glue further out than that bit. There we go, a bit of glue. And now, line this up. Get those edges nice and straight again. There we go. Oop, <laughs> I just completely moved that there. If you wanted to make that join a little bit stronger, once the glue's dry you could turn it upside down and just add some sticky tape down the join line on the back to help give it a little bit of extra protection. Alright, now I'm going to move on to these decorations on the left, which will also be glued on. I can't pick it up. Lots of glue on there and then slide it into position so my holes are going to line up. There we go. That one's stuck. And then next is um, another one for the glue. And this one is a bit of an easier one to start with because it's only the main pennant shape itself that comes in two pieces. All the other patterns are just one. Um, whereas some of them, these little colored bits that go on also come in two pieces. So I'll go through those as well with you in a little while. For all my stars, I will use some foam squares to give them a little bit of pop. Again, you could just glue them if you want to. It's completely up to you if you want your pennant to have any depth or not. My foam squares are quite small, so they fit in nicely. If yours are big, then you might need to just cut them with a pair of scissors to make them a little smaller. I'll leave that one for now so I can position that one when I know where the writing is going to go. So it'll pretty much just be as it is now. Just a little straighter. Obviously if you've done yours out of uh, letters that touch, it'll be much easier <laughs> rather than sticking one on at a time like I'm going to have to do. But I'm going to work through those bits now and glue them all down. This font that I've used here, it is quite thick. So um, I could foam square this if I really wanted to, but it would take a long time. And seeing as I've got four different ones to do, for the sake of just a little bit of time and ease, I'm gonna glue them. There's my wording. Now I can add that final star. There. And now I'll move on to the big baseball to go here. 
and I'm going to use my foam squares on the white to make it pop out a little bit. And this is quite a big piece of card, so I need to make sure that I've got foam squares all the way around the edge like this. Quite a lot of them. It's a bit hard to see white foam squares on a white bit of card on a white table. <laughs> but um, I'm also putting some in the middle. And the reason for this is that if there was nothing in the middle, there's nothing to keep this piece of card from sort of bending down like that under the weight of itself. But by putting a few foam squares in the middle too, you're giving it almost like a table to sit on nice and level. So it's going to look much better when it's stuck down. And now I have to go through and peel off all the tops of these foam squares. Those are done. Bring my pennant back in. Just gently drop it down to check you're happy with the positioning. If you're not, you could just pick it up and move it and not damage anything because it's not stuck yet. That's looking good to me, so I'll push down to seal. Finally, I've got the uh, top of the baseball. Because, again, it's quite thick, you could foam it or glue it, but I'm going to try and keep everything with just one level of foam. So this one will be glued. With that around the edge. Also down in here. There we are. I think I'll put it on at a little angle and it goes in the middle so there'll be a little bit of white around the edge there and then a final piece to add is this one to give it a little bit more strength along there where it's going to be tied I'll do mine with foam again you can glue it it doesn't matter it's completely up to you I'm not going to add any ribbon or ties or anything to mine because I don't have anywhere to put them <laughs> um, but you can add whatever you want on there so that you can hang it up but there we go there's my first pennant if I can pick it up my baseball one all finished Next, I'm going to stick together the ice hockey one. This one's a little bit more complicated. <laughs> There's a lot more pieces. But first, I'll just show you my basketball one stuck together. I won't show this one on camera because this goes together almost exactly the same way as the baseball one that I just showed you. There's the baseball one. Um, so I've glued on the letters, used foam for the stars glued on my bottom stripes and then used foam for the orange tab down here, the stars and the orange of the basketball and then glued the black on top. So exactly the same technique as the baseball one. So those two are done. Let's move those out the way. Um, so this one's a little bit harder to see because the base is white. Um, so bear with me a moment while I stick this one together. I'll start just like before with doing the actual pennant, getting that overlapped um, and stuck together. Glue down there and then line it up until you've got nice straight lines on the top and the bottom. There, just about. Okay, now this one, my striped pieces come in sections two. I've got one to go up against the edge, which I'll stick first because you can line up the holes here and here, which is going to be a lot easier. So we'll start with the orange, give it a nice glue down. This will make it easier to see my pennant as well because it's going to give it a bit of colour. There. Oh, oh, did you just hear my finger click when I pushed down? That hurt. <laughs> oh dear. Falling apart. 
<laughs> okay, next we've got the other bit. And the reason this is in two is just because otherwise it was a little bit too big to cut from my paper. And we've got these triangles, one at the top, one at the bottom. And we'll be overlapping those triangles so that they line up completely. And that's how you'll know where this goes. So, glue it on again. Okay, so I've added my glue. Now I can line up those triangles. So you'll notice that these bits don't quite touch the edge. There's a little white border on them. Is there. Next is the blue and again this comes in two parts so we'll start with the one on the left. I'm gonna have to go and fill my glue bottle up in a minute. With these when they start running out they get a little bit hard to squeeze. Okay that's my bottom one just glues right on top of the orange, nice and easy. And the second bit will also go on. Now this time it doesn't have the triangles, but it's going on top of the orange, so you know exactly where to put it. Oh, just lost my letter there. There's still a little bit of overlap on that left-hand side, and the right side will line up perfectly on that orange. Next is going to be the outline of my hockey player and this one I'm going to... it's up to you really, you could glue it because it's got a nice bit of depth from the bottom already and then you could foam this one but because of the small details here and here I actually think it would look better to foam the white and then glue the blue player on top. So that's the way round I'm going to do it. But as always with these designs, there's flexibility. Do what you think will look best. And this goes on. You can sort of see the outline of where to stick it. That covers up all those triangles and then I'll glue this one on top. Come on glue, you can make it to the end of this design. <laughs> sure it's normal to talk to your glue bottle, right? <laughs> Doesn't help that I keep leaving the lid off. Okay, this should go in the middle. So you've got a nice even gap of white around the edge. There. Okay, now this one I would foam. I'm trying to keep it sort of consistent between all four of the banners so that they'll all match nicely. Okay, there's that. Now we've got a few stars which I use my foam for because I did that on the other ones. Can't quite remember if this one was there or there on the design. I'm going to put it there. <laughs> and then there's one to go along the bottom, a bigger star, and one for the top. Right, bottom star. Done. And then this slightly bigger one for the top. There. All right, so then I would line up my letters so I can get them all stuck down nicely. sort of following the line of the, or trying to anyway, follow the line of the design. 
your team. There we are. So I'm not going to glue those right now on video because I really do need to refill my poor little glue bottle. Um, but I will glue my letters and then use foam squares on the um, hockey puck at the end so that will pop out a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that one and then we'll take a look at the final design which is the American football one. Here's my American football pennant and I've already got it to a point. So I've stuck my base together, I've glued on my uh, words, and I've glued on these bits and I've used foam squares for this. So exactly the same as the ice hockey one up to this point. And then the next piece is this big white piece of the helmet. I've added my foam squares on the back. So just put this on. Get that pushed down. There are lots of pieces to this helmet compared to all of the other um, pennants. So I think I'm probably going to end up gluing it all because otherwise it's going to be really, really thick compared to the others. But we shall see. So my next one is this grey one. I'm using a different glue now. This is my Tonic Studios glue. It's not as good as the Kalel because it kind of wrinkles the paper a little bit. It doesn't quite get it stuck down as nicely or as quickly as the Kalel I normally use, but it was right next to me. So I thought I'll just use it. Okay, that's that one. And then next we have these two. So you could foam square up, wait, which is my next one, the black. Hmm. No, I think I am going to glue it. It's completely up to you. I just don't want one of them to end up looking way thicker than the others. Although I suppose it doesn't really matter up to a point because you probably wouldn't be making all four of them. If you are, then that's amazing, and you're obviously a super sports fan. Okay, so this bit kind of goes inside. And then we'll have these ones on top. You know what? I am going to foam this one. Just a little bit more pop and dimension. Just can't help myself. Although, these little bits are going to be very annoying because <laughs> I'll have to cut my foam smaller to fit it inside. I've got one little bit already cut. Okay. I'm just doing this on top of the existing bits so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I need some small pieces. I'm running out as well. It seems to be the project where everything on my desk is almost all gone. Good. In there. One more tiny bit in there. Now I can peel the tops off to get to all that stickiness. gonna kind of go in the middle. Now I've got two different shades of red. The dark one will go first. And there's that one. Now this one. That dark bit's only used for the shadowing there. But it does make a difference, I think. And next we've got a white bit making up the know, guard, mouth guard. It's probably got a particular name, but I don't know what it could be. Oh dear. I know nothing about American football. <laughs> I don't really know anything about English football either. Let me know in the comments which one of these pennants is your favourite. 
Or have I missed any sports? Are there any that should be included in the sports mega bundle that I've missed? There are 50 different sports in there, so uh, hopefully your favourite is there. But if I've missed any, please let me know. And now I've got three pieces. And I can't remember where they go. But I'm going to try and work it out from the sizes. I think that's right. Glue these um this looks so cool with uh all the depth. One these bits feel tiny after working on the rest of these where it's only big bits of card. They wouldn't be that small compared to my normal layered designs, but I think once you're working on something big then you get a little bit, it just seems even smaller. There. Oh, I think this one's my favourite, you know. There's just so much going on there. All right, there's my American football one done. If I zoom out a little bit, you'll be able to see them all. So we've got American football. We've got ice hockey. We've got basketball and last but not least baseball <laughs> you can't really see them all because there's they're still too big but uh you get the general gist so anyway i hope you've enjoyed making these sports pennants with me now before you go i just want to give you a little quick reminder about the sports mega bundle if you're into your sports you won't want to miss out on these designs if you love sports and crafting, check out my brand new sports mega bundle. It contains layered cardstock cut files for a whopping 50 different sports. From American football to soccer, baseball to cricket, water sports, team sports, martial arts, car and motorbike sports and everything in between. All your favourite sporting themes in one affordable SVG bundle. Male and female versions are included for each design that features a person and there are also a wide range of cut files solely focused on the sport without any people in them. My layered SVG files retail for $5 each, which means purchasing all 50 designs would usually cost $250. However, you can purchase the Mega Bundle for just $37, getting you all these sporty designs at a much reduced price. But hurry, this price is only available until midnight EST on Wednesday 31st of January. After that, the bundle price will rise to $97. Here are a few more designs from the bundle, but you can view all 50 of them at craftwithsarah.com forward slash bundle dash sports. I hope you enjoy this sports collection. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll be back soon with more cricket crafting tutorials, but for now, thank you so much for watching. Bye!